Hi everyone, Facebook world. It's been a while since I've done a video and I wanted to jump on and say hello and share a few things. I know um, I've been putting out several different words recently and some people have had questions as far as how they all relate, how they all come together. Um, since what I was saying back in February, end of February, beginning of March, related to Esther and Haman, and um, and then now some of the things that are going on, you know, that I've been posting. So I kind of wanted to just jump on. And hi, Danica. And um, take a few minutes and just kind of bring it together and share kind of some things that I've been seeing that I've been sharing um, a little bit on social media, but um, also kind of in my circle of people. Hi, Jen. Um, and give a little bit of context and just what I'm hearing the Lord saying, which um, I, I have had more of an urgency on the inside of me, um, a real urgency more than I ever have in my lifetime. I'm not trying to be dramatic. <laughs> um, but I just want to share some of those things with you guys. Now, you know, um, I'm actually going to give it just a few more minutes for some people to jump on. Um, while I'm doing that though, I'll let you guys know that, um, for those of you who are interested and in asked our behold children's course Registration for that is open. Yay! And I'm so excited. And the timing of this even is just, I love how God works things out in his timing. Um, the heart of it is to really bring the children, ages 7 to 14, into seeing Jesus and, and really helping form a foundation for them of who Jesus is and knowing how to meet with him and encounter him and recognize him. So you guys can, that registration's open if you're interested in that or you want more information, along with several um, other of our courses that are going on right now. It's busy, busy time. Um, but just, I want to pray. I want to start off and pray first. So Holy Spirit, we just thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Holy Spirit. We just thank you for everyone watching, everyone who will watch this, everyone who hears the sound of my voice. Holy Spirit, you are the spirit of truth. You are truth. We thank you. We love you. We honor you, Holy Spirit. We desire you we long for you. We choose you. We want you above everything. We want truth, Holy Spirit. So we just align with you and honor you right now and ask for truth. We ask for your word right now to illuminate our hearts. Only your word, Holy Spirit, that your word would come and that it would pierce our hearts and open our eyes and open our ears uh, to see and discern uh, you and what you're doing, what's going on on the earth and how we're to respond. We just thank you. We thank you for that Holy Spirit right now that you touch each one right now listening. You know where they are. You know what they need. You know how they're to be prepared. We thank you for your help. We cry out today, today for you, for mercy, for your help, Holy Spirit. Yeah, amen, amen. So as you guys know, back in March, the beginning of March, many of you probably know, some of you don't, I put out a word about Esther, and I'm going to go through this really quick. Um, and actually before the Esther word, I had a dream. I had a dream about being in, I was watching Israel in Egypt and, um, they were, I, I it was Exodus 12, 22, and I knew it was where God told Israel to stay in their homes. And it was a quick dream. I woke up and I heard Romans 12 
And um, God spoke to me and he said, you know, the people of the nation, in the nations, they pray for their leaders. And when their leaders do the best that they can, they don't agree with them and they do what they want. And so their prayers are not answered, God said to me. And he said, I call it rebellion. And it shook me. Uh, I, I mean, when that happened to me, I knew for me, I had 10 weeks of travel planned, like shortly after that. And I knew I was supposed to cancel all my travel plans and stay home. Now for me, it's simple. I heard God's voice understood what he was doing and I needed to just do it. I, I don't need my opinions. I don't even need to understand, to be honest. That's the way I live my life. And he says it. I trust that he's going to reveal whatever he needs to reveal to me at the time. And so that's what I did. And I, I was stunned, actually, then to begin to see a lot of rebellion rising up in the name of God, you know, and and I'll get a little bit more into that in a minute. But then um, then he spoke to me about Esther. And he said, we're like in the time of Esther. And he said, Esther was wise. She was not presumptuous. She was humble and wise is what he said to me. Now, check this out. God had a call for Esther. Now, I think in terms of the church, because I'm talking about the corporate church. This is a word for the church right now. God had a call for Esther, an identity for such a time as this, right? To deliver uh, her people. And so that was confirmed, right? Mordecai confirmed that. She agreed. Okay, I'm called for such a time as this. This is who I am. Now, we as the church, we can say we know who we are. We, we have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. And we're called to take authority over this and over that. 100%, that's who we are, amen. But what was Esther's response? Esther's response was not presumption or arrogance or pride in any way. What did she do? She drew back. She drew back. She submitted herself. She humbled herself and she actually fasted. And I talked about this in March and I said, this is what God's calling us to Um. It's not a three-day thing. It's a seasonal thing. And and just for, for those of you just jumping on, I'm just summarizing the past really quick until I get into what I want to share about what I see coming, what's going on now and what's coming. And, um, and so Esther humbled herself and she submitted herself to God. And he told me, he said, this is what I'm looking for people to do right now. I'm looking for Esther's. I'm looking for the response of Esther. And in the time, the fullness of time, in the time of manifestation, Esther's would arise. And I want to clarify, because I've said this several times to different people. God speaks, you know, he's, he's spoken to me about Esther. He's spoken to me about Joseph. He's spoken to me about Noah. It's about the time of manifestation regarding a specific season that we're in. And... And I had mentioned back then that part, part of what I saw along with that was that through the church, we were going to see a new manifestation of Jesus, okay? Christ in us, the hope of glory. Christ in us coming out. However God created you to be, whoever he designed you to be uniquely, it's Christ in you manifesting in a new way in your life. It's the church rising up, okay? And listen, there's an agenda going on. There's a storyline that we are a part of, guys. It, th things aren't randomly happening. It's not, you know, an accident. There, there is a storyline that we are in. There is a wedding coming. There is a return of a Jewish man to this planet. His name is Jesus. And God in his kindness, we're, we, he's preparing us, right? We're, we're moving towards something. And that we have to remember the big storyline that we're in. It's not just focusing on a chapter, but on the book. And so, um, you know, so in this time, there's a new growth. There's a new glory. There's a new manifestation of the church. And I was, you know, talking about that. But. 
How does that happen? And I talked about that. It was the retreating. It was the receiving the oil. His name is flowing oil. This is this place where we would get anointed in the hidden place. And I've talked a lot about the hidden one, Jesus, the hidden one. And then I put out, you know, different posts about how the enemy is trying to distract us and pull us out of that place. The enemy loves to create fires and get us to chase fires and put out fires. I mean, he loves to distract us from, to get us out of the place where God has us so that he can slow down, delay, disrupt, you know, whatever. He, that's just what he does. And I've put out several words about that, about how the enemy was doing that. And he was trying to get us offended. He was trying to get us distracted. He was trying to get us out of the place we needed to be in, in order to be in agreement with God and what God was doing. And we, that is happening in such an intense way right now. So many people are offended, you know, um, so I'm going to stay on track and I'll get into that in a minute. So, you know, what, basically what I was saying is guys, God, he spoke to me. He said, I'm dealing with the rebellion in my people. Not God's not angry. He's not mad at us. He loves us. He's kind it's in his kindness and it's actually in his love that he's doing this. He's maturing us. He's bringing us forward into maturity. And he's bringing us forward into a new glory, into new realms of life. And what does that look like? How do we go from glory to glory to glory? It's always through pressure. It's always through challenges. That's the way of God, whether we like it or not. Everything in creation prophesies that. You can look at the birth of a baby, the process of a baby, a new life coming forward onto this planet. How does that baby come forward? It comes forward through pressure. It's a prophecy. He's speaking to us. How does spring, how does new fruit come forth? You've got winter first. You have death. Death always precedes glory. There's always pressure, challenges before there's a new glory. And it's we can stare at the challenges and, and look at what's going on. And so many times, and this is what a lot, the perspective I'm hearing, is people want to pray things away. We just want to pray things away and we miss it. We miss what God's doing when we just, we're going to pray. Get the intercessors together and let's pray. Pray it away. I've been, I've been saying, can you imagine in my, we're doing a course right now called Discerning His Voice. And I was talking, I did a video about um, Pharaoh and how Moses, God sent the Mo Moses, the prophet to Israel with a word and then said, you know, I'm going to send you to Pharaoh and tell him this. And then, oh, by the way, I'm going to harden his heart. <laughs> and then we see what Pharaoh did. Can you imagine Israel rising up to pray against what Pharaoh was doing? I mean, that makes absolutely no sense. God hardened Pharaoh's heart. We, my point is, that we want to be in agreement and understand what God is doing and not just think we're going to pray away everything that's hard or challenging or difficulty or difficult. We have to understand what he's doing. And in this time, you know, there is, we're in a season where things are being confronted, where things are coming up in us. I've said this over and over and over. God is rooting out rebellion. He's rooting out self. He, our opinions, our agenda, our ideas, the Lord, Lord, the name Lord, Jesus is Lord. What does that mean? It means he is in charge. He is the leader. And he is saying that to us. I am the leader. And we, I mean, he's not a control freak. It's his kindness and it's his love in doing this. We lack the fear of the Lord. We are, and this is, 
this, this is in the Bible. We get to a point at the end of the age, one of the signs is rebellion, self-seeking, you know, fighting, it's self-gratification, it's me, 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 what's comfortable, what feels good, I do what I want, it's rebellion. And he's rooting that out of his church right now. And so one thing um, that I have real concern about right now, um, this real urgency uh, in my heart about some things that are coming, and I'll share that um, for a minute. Um, there are, um, I said during the coronavirus that we're watching a movie trailer and not the movie. I've said that, I said that over and over and over. I'm like, guys, this is not the movie. This is a movie trailer. We are in a movie trailer. We're getting a clip right now and, um, to something much, much bigger Little did I know much of what I was saying at the time. Um, and what I meant by that was, um, you know, when you read Matthew 25, for example, the parable of Matthew 25, the 10 virgins, it's a storyline. It's our story. It's, it's what's, what we're entering into, um, you know, at the return of Jesus, it says, Matthew 25, verse 5, But while the bridegroom was delayed, they slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. That We're coming into that, you guys. The bridegroom is coming. There will be a call, Go out to meet him. And it says, Five were wise, Five were foolish. Five had oil. Five did not have oil. And this correlates to right now. It correlates to today. This is going to happen, but we've got small examples of this in our lives that happen now. And we are in one of those times where something is coming. And um, this year, I feel, I'm really, I love it heard uh paul keith davis say this like years ago he's been putting my butt out in the wind on this one but i have such an urgency in my heart um i feel like what we've seen with the coronavirus um there's something another wave coming i i um i'm not a hundred percent whether it's the same virus or it's a different one I will say that I feel like it has different manifestations, meaning um, I, uh, my sense is it's like a mutation and um, it will be more severe than the first one was. And I, the only um, way I can explain it is like, I, I, was, I was walking through Target one day and I literally felt like, stunned like when something shocks you and it happened to me three times like I got shocked three different times and one of them and the, and I knew it was about some things that were coming that were so um shocking people it was suddenly it was people were taken off guard and um one of them had to do with this um with the virus and um and I was like, wow, Lord, okay. The second thing that I saw was um, um, like war. And, um, and it's not just on, our, on a civil unrest like we're seeing right now on our land. I actually saw nations conspiring against our nation this is so important you guys to understand this is so 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 important i saw specific nations which i'm not going to name which i did name before related to the coronavirus i feel like that same nation is involved um, with this that are conspiring um, against the United States to take advantage of our weakness and to further weaken us. This is what it's about, though. 
They want to disrupt our economy. They want to, they want to disrupt our elections and they want to disrupt our economy for control. It's about money at the end of the day. I literally saw um, people making nations coming together, conspiring, making plans to send things out to weaken us that our nation, I, I mean it, I see it now as I'm talking to you and it's stunning to me um, the position that our nation is in right now and we're so busy fighting each other that we're ignorant to what's going on. We have got to come together as a nation and stop our foolishness because there's something bigger going on that we're completely missing. And it will take us off guard because we're too busy fighting each other. And um, I see these nations like, okay, we're going to send this. We're going to send that. There's specific things sent to disrupt our election and create chaos um, with a virus election stuff, threats of war, and what it does is it gets us in such a chaotic place, it disrupts our economy. And what they're doing and what they're wanting to do is set up, I don't even know how to explain what I'm seeing, but they, but they want to set up another economy. They're wanting to set up, take control over the finances of the world and the economy to reestablish uh, new boundary lines is what I'm saying. It's like, it's like having control. They want control over the earth's economy. Uh, and I'm not trying to be like third world, you know, all this conspiracy stuff. I'm just telling you what I see. And it's to make America weak. We're, where we are not the big dog, right? We are not our economy is not strong. They want our economy weak so they can take over and run the finances of the world. That is the plan. Okay, well, okay, so that's the plan. I mean, I'm sure, you know, Iran and different nations, they've wanted to do that for a long time. But I will say we need to be awake and alert to what's going on because this is like happening now. <laughs> like, um, we're at war and we don't even know it. We're so busy at war within our own nation right now that we don't recognize the attack that we're under from other nations, but we will see it where we will see it. But here's the thing I want to say, I, I don't say this to you guys to be afraid and, and again, I, I put on a post earlier, I said, I don't believe these things can be averted. And, um, and here's why. Number one, this isn't taking God off guard. God's not punishing us. He's not mad at us. But I encourage you, go read the story of Pharaoh and Moses and the heart of God and what God was after and what God was doing. You couldn't pray Pharaoh away. You, you couldn't stop what Pharaoh was, was going to do at that time. Why? God hardened Pharaoh's heart. And God's allowing this. Why? There's a bigger story going on. There's something much bigger going on. And it's for our good. We, 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 our economy is about to get hit. But we're going to recover. Boundary lines are going to be reestablished. And we are going to grow and we are going to be strengthened and we're going to prosper. But, but I don't want to talk about that right now yet. What I want to say is that in this time, um, we're not going to be able to pray this away. And I, the reason I say that is so important to know how to respond and what God is after because I've been in Jeremiah a lot. I've been reading a lot about, uh, reading a lot of when God sent Israel into Babylon and what he spoke to Jeremiah and the heart of God and the mind of God and what was going on. And, 
and just to see God's heart for his people, his love for us is just like my, he's so in love with us. I, I can't emphasize that enough. He's not mad at us, uh, but he does, he is wanting to mature us and grow us. And, um, and so in the midst of this, with this going on with these nations and, um, People are going to be affected in a um, in a in a negative way. Um, people are going to suffer loss. But I want to emphasize this: this is not the heart of God for His people. And this is where I'm going to correlate this back to Esther um, and something I've been talking about for months now about our response and what God is doing. And what he wants to do in us and through us in this time. Um, and, you know, we hear we've just being in this Pentecost season and everyone's talking about revival and Pentecost. And I'm going, oh, my gosh, we are in revival right now. Jesus is in our midst right now, releasing things for his church that we don't even perceive we're so busy praying for something that is already right in front of us and i i use the analogy of like israel you know crying out for their messiah and their messiah was in their midst and they didn't discern him they did not see him he was there and they i mean with passionate cries crying out for him and he was right there in their midst and that's the same thing happening with us right now uh, you know, we're, we're begging, we're asking, we're crying out for things that we already have right now. And I've been saying this and I've seen this happening with people already talking with people about it. It's happening with me as we respond like Esther and we're in that place of pulling back and we're not being deceived. We're not drinking the Kool-Aid. We're sitting before the Lord. He is pouring out abundant seed. And I want to explain to you what that seed is. It's seed, for example, like Esther. In that time, she was being, she was receiving the oil she needed to go before the king. It was like Joseph. Joseph being positioned in a time where he would actually be a source of supply for the nations. It's like Noah, who was receiving the word of the Lord for the ark that would be a safe place for those when the flood came. Right now, what God's doing in the secret place, in the hidden place, for those who are submitted to him, those who are not being distracted, those who are, this is so important, you guys, those who are not being, you know, fighting and devouring and being offended. Listen, if you're offended, deal with it now, get over it and move through it to this next place because we have a few months, you know, um, to, be, to do this. Um, in this place right now, those who are doing that and really listening to the Lord and sitting the Lord and girding up their minds and being sober and setting their mind and their eyes on Him, He is releasing things for you for this next season to come where you will have, where you will be a source of supply. You will be a Noah. You will be an Esther. You will be a Joseph. It is not God's heart for you to... to necessarily suffer loss i've been reading you know jeremiah 9 where it's like in the time of famine you will prosper that's what he has for us and it's not just so that we can prosper it's uh, and, and when i talk about prosper it's not just about money god is really i've said this in the post that i've put up god's releasing seed but it's not just about money for it's different things it's business ideas it's the word of the Lord. It's revelation. It's songs. It's books. It's all. It depends on who you are and how God made you. He is releasing seed for you in this season for you to receive. And that in the time which I believe is coming at the end of this year, before the end of the year, the fall, um, you will be able to rise and shine and have something to give. You will have an ark for people. Because I'm telling you, so many people are going to be afraid. Their fear is going to be rampant, you guys. And we can we have got to have oil. Now, oil, so many times we talk about oil, 
being just like intimacy and that's me i preach it intimacy with jesus but oil is not just spiritual it's natural it's practical you have something substantial you know and in the at the end of this year coming up there are going to be people who have oil there's something coming they will have oil and some won't have oil and when you if you don't have oil when the when that happens and you're looking for, you know, what do I do? What do I do? You make yourself vulnerable to fear because you're taken off guard. And so this is the time where we get oil. His name right now is flowing oil. There's oil flowing for you that's releasing seed that you can be a source of supply for yourself, for your family, for those around you, whatever it is. It's not a time to be afraid. We're going through something just as a baby goes through a birth canal. You know, it's the kindness of God too. It's his mercy. I, I've said this for years and years and years. It's one of my like favorite things to say because I feel like we misunderstand the nature of God so many times. But you have to understand that God leads us into storms. He leads us into lands with giants. God leads us into these places. Why? So that we can, he can, so we can see who he is, so we can become who we already are. He leads us into storms and lands with giants so that we can see who he is, so we can become who we already are. I've got several teachings on that, so I won't get into it. But you have to understand that God's not just about saving us from something or making us comfortable. He's about us growing and maturing and becoming the beautiful bride who's co-laboring and running with him. So now is where we have to be prepared. Even now, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Don't be distracted. Don't be offended. Don't be fighting with people. Get alone with the Lord and receive the seed that he has for you. The creative ideas, I believe that there are going to be so many new business ideas coming forth in this next season. There's so many people are going to prosper. There's such rich revelation that's going to be coming out of this season, you know, and we, God wants us to be a light, you guys, a light to those who are in darkness. It's the time for us to arise and shine. But will you be able to arise and shine if, you, if we can't get this, if we can't get it in this small, I mean, this isn't small thing, but if we can't get it in these seasons like this, we're crazy if we think we're going to be a wise virgin at the return of Jesus, honestly. I mean, we've got these little movie trailers, <laughs> you know, these little movie clips that we get to go through so that we actually can be prepared at the return of Jesus or be those that raise up a generation that will be and have that word and have that wisdom and have prepared that way for them. And so let's not be distracted. Let's not, you know, allow ourselves to be pulled and tossed to and fro, but realize what God is doing is inviting us in right now to sit with him and to get pre paired practically i'm i'm not one of those survival store up for the end times people anyone that knows me knows I, i'm a florida girl i've never even prepared for a hurricane that's just not how how i am but i've been preparing for some things practically preparing my heart and i'm getting things ready because i cannot tell you the urgency that i've been feeling in my spirit with this and and again i want to stress I, this is not to promote fear. I don't want you to be afraid, but I want you to be ready. I want you to be prepared. Have your heart prepared. Stop the madness. Stop fighting and arguing. Get along with Jesus. See his face. The beautiful one, the one who loves us. Get in his face. He's got treasure for, for us right now. To be prepared, to be ready, to arise and to shine. Um, I, I really feel like, specifically, we're going to start to see some things. 
and it could be off a little bit on the timing. Um, so I'm really putting myself out there with this, but I feel like uh, September, we're going to start to see things shift. But once we get into November, December, January, I just feel such an intensity going on. And so, um, I, I know for me, I'm looking at it. Okay. Whatever, you know, for me, it starts in September in terms of how I'm viewing things. And so, um, just want to encourage you guys, I submit this to you, to pray. I know I put this word out, you know, the other day a couple times and people were saying, I haven't really heard this. Everyone's talking about revival. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what does revival look like, you guys? We, I mean, like, we're missing it. We're missing Jesus. We're missing what he's doing when we, we, we don't see him. We're, we're waiting for some kind of outward manifestation for something to happen. No, it's Christ in us. The hope of glory, it's him coming through us. It's us arising in challenging times. But it's not going to just happen by itself. It's not going to magically fall on you one day. You've got to make yourself ready. Esther, Joseph, no, I mean, I could go on and on and on and on and on. It depends. It looks different for everybody. But so again, I submit that to you guys and I, I'm going to try to do more videos about this. We've been so lit up about this feeling like, oh, we need to be ready. We need to not be sleeping and slumbering and being offended and distracted. And are there important things going on in our nation that need to be addressed? 100%. But I'm telling you, the enemy is pouring gasoline on that fire to, to blow things up, to create a distraction to something else that's going on that's, that is a big deal. So pray about that, you guys. And um, yeah, let's, let's be that bride who arises and shine and actually is a source of supply who actually can be a light and not be taken off guard, not be afraid and not be deceived. Amen. Bye guys.